When we look at trees in a forest, we tend to think of them as living as isolated individuals, but these notions are starting to be challenged by new research. There's a lot more passing between trees than we originally suspected, and it's all happening in the soil. We've known about mycorrhizal fungi since the 19th century, but more is coming to light about the precise nature of their relationship with their hosts. Around 90% of plants have a complex and mutually beneficial relationship with these fungi, with each relying on the other for essential nutrients and minerals. As mycorrhiza can't photosynthesize, they require a plant to provide it with vital sugars. In return, the stretching network of the fungi's hyphae provides the plant with water and nutrients in the soil. However, it turns out that the nature of the tree's interaction with the fungi is about more than just symbiosis between the two. Researchers in British Columbia were the first to discover that Douglas fir and paper birch trees can actually pass carbon amongst themselves via their connected network of mycelia, and it is now known that nitrogen and phosphorus can also be exchanged in this way. As you can imagine, for young saplings in a forest, this is especially vital. Unable to compete for sunlight, they rely on the larger trees surrounding them to pump sugars into their roots via the mycelium. In China in 2010, it was discovered that when one plant in a community is attacked by a pest, it can release chemical signals via its mycelium. The other plants in the network will receive these signals and can work on defending themselves against the attack, perhaps by raising the tannins in their leaves, making them less palatable. However, tree interaction is not always positive. Allelopathy is a very common phenomenon in trees and shrubs, such as Rhododendron ponticum. These plants will release chemicals into the soil, which makes it more difficult for other things to grow near it, thereby reducing competition for vital resources.